In the recent past, several publications have listed education in our, in our schools as being in dire straits. However, Professor Nick Spall, Associate Professor in the Economic Department at the University of St. Bosch, who we've spoken to about this in the past, says it's not necessarily the complete picture. He joins us now. Professor Spall, good evening to you and thank you for your time. There have been some claims that, in fact, our education system is among the worst or the worst in the world. Is that true? No, it's not. <clears throat> um, and thanks for having me, Stephen. <clears throat> so um, the reason why it's not true is when we take part in these international assessments that rank our education system relative to others around the world, generally only about 40 countries participate, and most of those are high-income countries, wealthy countries like England or Japan or Singapore. Um, and we come at the bottom of that ranking. So we come 40th out of 40 countries, for example. But it's really important to emphasize there are about 193 countries in the world, and most of those countries are not taking part in these assessments. So it's just factually incorrect to say that we are the worst in the world. And we know from other data that we would likely perform much better than some of those other countries. Is it useful to compare ourselves to other countries? I mean, different countries have different uh, syllabi, syllabi, curricula. Um, they teach their children in different ways. There must be useful points of comparison, and there must be moments when it's not that useful. So I would say, Stephen, there's two reasons why, we would, uh, why it's a good idea to take part in this, and to the department's credit, uh, they have chosen to take part in the international reading test and international math test. One is called PEARLS, and the other one is called TIMS. Um, and the, the first reason and the most important reason is it can tell us whether or not our system is improving over time. In other words, these tests are intertemporally comparable. So we can see if things are improving or not over time. And it turns out that before the pandemic, uh, South Africa's education system in both reading and maths was one of the fastest improving systems in the world. And again, that's a fact that most South Africans don't know. But the other reason why it is useful to compare ourselves to other countries is that we live in a globalized world. We live in a globalized economy. Um, so comparing us relative to other countries like Egypt or Brazil or Iran or Jordan, um, not just the high income countries, is actually useful to sense check whether or not our education system uh, is fit for purpose in the modern world. In the wake of that last report, which showed that over 80 percent, it was 82 percent of our learners in grade four cannot read for meaning. There was a huge outcry, lots of conversations about it. Uh, if I remember, the basic education department said it would start a process of consulting teachers before it embarked on any reform. Is there any evidence of improvement or political will to improve things? So I think what we are seeing is uh, there are a lot of signs from the Department of Basic Education that they are generating uh, this integrated reading sector plan, what you've just referred to. Um, there are meetings that have been proposed uh, in the second half of this year to review those. There are no documents that have been sent out to review by anyone yet. Uh, but I think if you look at what the Director General is saying, if you look at what the Minister is saying, I think it's clear that the Department uh, is taking this issue of reading much more seriously than it was in the past which is a really good thing. But obviously, uh, we need to, to see what are the concrete plans and what are the budgets that are allocated to these things to improve reading outcomes. Uh, but all signs are that we're moving in the right direction and there is now more political will to tackle reading, which is definitely a good thing. Normally, improving an education system is actually a very difficult thing to do. It takes a long time. There's certain reasons uh, why that is. You're dealing with a very large number of young people and a large number of teachers. And, and in our country, we have particular diff difficulties around particularly racialized inequality. Um, you mentioned, I didn't know this before, you said it a moment ago, that we were at one point one of the, more, one of the education systems that was improving more quickly than almost all of the others. Is it possible to get us back to that position again? So just to, to clarify for your listeners, the, the Human Sciences Research Council looked uh, using the TIM study between 2003 and 2015, uh, and we had the largest gain in grade 9 math scores uh, compared to the other 40 countries that participated. And again, when we say the fastest countries in the world, we mean the fastest countries of those that are measuring the education system over time which again is only this 40 or 50 countries. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I do think it's possible to get back onto that trajectory of improvement because some of the factors that contributed to the improvement were things like uh, better educated teachers, uh, more resources going into education, better educated parents. Uh, there was also economic growth over this period, um, better teacher training, uh, the provision of universal workbooks and a school feeding program that reaches uh, 9 million children every single day. 
Um, but I don't think that we should say that because we had that trajectory, it automatically means we're going to fall back uh, onto the trajectory because there were these really large pandemic uh, learning losses, and those won't go away without a really systematic plan to try and remediate those losses. Professor Nick Spall from Stellenbosch University, thank you very much.